Welcome back. This mini lesson is a small introduction into the field of random number generators. In Monte Carlo simulations, we need to sample random values to a large number of random variables, such as the distance to the next collision, or the number of fission neutrons, or the energy of fission neutrons, and many other quantities. We cannot do this directly. Instead, what we do, we employ the so-called random number generators, which randomly sample the interval 0 to 1. And we take this random number and we transform it into a probability distribution that matches the uh, random variable that we want to simulate. So the random number generators, they select the numbers randomly from the uniform distribution from the interval 0 and 1. So that's denoted by this u. And then we are going to take these random numbers and transform them into the probability density distribution uh, given for specific random variables. There are some additional requirements that we have on random number generators. First of all, the random numbers should appear to be random. So that is the first requirement, the randomness. The requirement of the randomness means that the uh, numbers in the sequence of random numbers that the generator gives us are not correlated with each other. So uh, they should appear to be random, but in a while we are going to learn, they are not truly random in the sense that they cannot be predicted. Uh, therefore we call these numbers pseudo-random and uh, we often call these generators pseudo-random generators. Nevertheless, the important thing is that the numbers in the sequence are not correlated with each other and they appear to be random. So that means when we run some statistical checks on the randomness of these numbers, we can see that uh, they appear to be random. And that's, that's basically what we need. The other requirement is the reproducibility. That means we need that the random number generator is able to replicate the sequence of random numbers. Now, this requirement is not needed for the sake of simulations themselves. It's simply needed for debugging of the Monte Carlo codes. When uh, some specific error shows up during a simulation, we need to be able to track down the bug in the source code and uh, make sure that uh, the error doesn't show up again. And uh, if we couldn't replicate the sequence of random numbers, then uh, the error maybe wouldn't show up just because the conditions wouldn't be the same again. So therefore this, is, uh, this requirement is primarily in order to be able to debug the Monte Carlo codes. The next requirement relates to the length of the sequence of the random numbers. Each generator will give us a sequence which uh, we want to be very long uh, because once we use up all the numbers from the sequence the random number generator will start to repeat the sequence uh, so so if this sequence is very short for instance uh, just few hundred or thousand of numbers then uh, we would be getting uh, systematic errors in the, in the in the Monte Carlo simulations. The, the numbers would start to repeat over and over, and the the neutron histories would not be uh, random anymore. So, uh, so this is quite an important uh, requirement, and uh, the the random number generators that are currently used in established Monte Carlo codes provide very, very long sequences, so it's practically impossible that uh, we would use up all the numbers from the sequence. 
Another requirement is the reasonable computer memory demand. So, so the generator shouldn't take up too much from the random access memory. That's usually not a problem. These uh, generators are uh, very efficient in terms of uh, the need for uh, the random access memory. And finally, we want that the computing time needed for generating the random numbers is as small as possible. That's because we need to generate very large number of random numbers during every single Monte Carlo simulations. We may need millions or billions of random numbers. Uh, and in any case, uh, a very large part of the computing time is taken up by the random number generators. So one way of improving the efficiency of Monte Carlo simulation is to use more efficient random number generators. We could think of many different ways of generating random numbers, but uh, not all of them would satisfy our requirements. For instance, the requirement for the reproducibility of the numbers could be very hard to satisfy if the generator was based on, for instance, uh, measuring, recording and digitizing some white noise. Therefore, the generators that we use are all used on deterministic algorithms. They are part of the program and therefore we call them pseudo-random generators. And there are many pseudo-random generators, different types. Uh, we are going to learn about the so-called linear congruential generator, LCG. But there are many other types, such as the multiple recursive generator or nonlinear generators and some others. The LCGs are widely used because they are really simple to implement and they satisfy all the requirements that we stated. They are efficient, they, uh, they give uh, numbers that are not correlated with each other. They are uh, that they don't take up too much of uh, memory from the computer and they, they run very fast. The LCGs are truly simple generators and they are given by a single equation that you can see here. Uh, the random numbers are denoted by X. Uh, so the sequence is uh, indexed. The index is here, N. So as you can see, each random number that the generator gives depends on the previous random number in the sequence. Therefore, in order to start the LCG, you need to have so-called seed, the very first random number that we denote by X0. So you need to have the seed. So typically, when you run your Monte Carlo simulation, that is powered by the LCG, then you need to provide the seed to the, to the random number generator. Note that there are some parameters in the equation A, C and M. All these parameters are integer numbers and they are positive. The a parameter is called the multiplier, the C parameter is called the additive constant, and the M parameter is the modulus. There are only a few operations, so we have the multiplication of the A parameter with the, with the previous uh, random number, then we have the summation, and then we have an interesting operation, modulo. The modulo operation will give us the least non-negative residue after you divide one number with the other one. So after you divide the number in the brackets by m. Now this division is integer, so it will give a, a, a residue. So uh, you, we are taking the, the least non-negative residue. So let me give you an example. So for instance, 
the operation uh, 10 mod 3 would give us the number 1. That's because you can fit the number 3 three times in number 10 and you will get the reminder 1. Let's take another example. 10 mod 4. This would give us the number 2. An important thing to realize is that all these numbers are integer numbers, including those x n random numbers that the generator is generating. And these numbers, all of them, can be very large. Uh, actually, they can the, the random numbers x that the generator gives us can be as large as the value of m. So in order to scale it down into the interval 0, 1, we need to normalize the x numbers by the m value. So, so there are in fact two equations. One is giving us the random numbers from 0 up to m and the other equation normalizes the random numbers to the interval 0 to 1. So the normalized values are denoted by u. A very important thing is the implementation of the LCG in the program. Uh, all these numbers x, a, c and m, they need to be specified as integer numbers. And moreover, we need to make sure that they can hold large values. Now you know that uh, when you, for instance, in C or C++, when you define uh, your quantity, you need to specify the type. And uh, if you choose integer type, it can be integer standard integer type, which uh, has four bytes, or you can choose long integer type, which uh, has eight byte. The the four byte integer can hold up, it can hold uh, two to the power of thirty two values, while the a byte integer can hold uh, two to the power of sixty four values. So when you can use, simply choose the eight byte uh, integer type. It can give you more values than the four byte integer, which uh, can give the largest integer of slightly more than 4 uh, billion and that may not be very sufficient for our needs. So uh, it can be proven that the maximal uh, length of the sequence of the random numbers that LCG can give is actually M. So uh, if you specify the M and all the other parameters as 4 byte integer then the maximal sequence you can get from the LCG that you program is slightly more than 4 billion numbers, which may not be sufficient nowadays. If you program yourself the LCG generator, you can debug it and test it on these specific values. So uh, these are actually suitable even for generators which are based on 4-byte integer numbers. But you can use these values even if you if you specify a byte uh, integer numbers in your LCG. So the m value needs to be a large number. Interestingly, the generator works very well even with uh, the c value, the additive constant, set to zero. And then we randomly choose the a value. The seed number in this case is selected here. A fairly, it can be a fairly large number, right? Because remember, this value x0 is not normalized. It's not scaled down to the interval 0, 1. So this can be a large number up to the value of m. Right. So, so uh, when you program your LCG, just pause this video and check out that you are getting the same numbers. So here we have the x1, x2, x3, 
and then we have the normalized values u1, u2 and u3. So you should be getting the same uh, values if your generator is correctly programmed. And that is all for now and I will see you in the next one.